We make our users change their passwords every 90 to 45, 60 days. Some places even every 30 days. Anybody, anybody do 15 days? No, probably not. It's really unusual to see companies that change their service passwords that often. And, well, it's easy to see why, because look, you open up Server Manager, you wait a few minutes, maybe you connect to a remote machine. Uh, you can certainly do that in here. And then down to Configuration, then down to Services, and then you just got to go find whatever service it was, and then you have to change the password that it uses over here, so log on with this account, type the new password, whatever. Nobody wants to do it. If you've got a service account that's used on a dozen machines, that's a dozen machines you have to connect to and do this. If you're changing them every 90 days and you've got a bunch of different service accounts where you have to do that, well, I mean, it's easy to see. In some places, you'd have to have a full-time person that just did nothing but log on and change service passwords all day, every day. Well, you know, you can make it a little bit better. Let's hop down here to Windows PowerShell, for example. Um, I could do something like this. Get wmyobject class. Win32 service, computer name, and I'll just specify one computer on my network. That could be a comma-separated list of computers, or you could even query all the users in a particular Active Directory organizational unit. And I don't want everything. I just want to grab the services that meet this filter criteria. Name equals bits. Bits usually runs under local service. It's just a service I like to play with in this example, because if I break it, I'm not going to be messing up anything too critical to the operating system. Then we're going to pipe those to a commandlet called for each object, and we are going to tell it for each one of those, execute the change method. Now, surprisingly, the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parameters I don't care about. I just want to change the eighth, which is password. And uh, then I hit enter, and I hold my breath, and perfect. Return value of zero is good news. Now, if I had provided several different computer names, it would have gone out to each one. And assuming I had the right permissions, it would have changed that password for that service running on each of those computers. There's still a problem with this, though. You have to keep track of which computers are running which service. And, and in any size environment, it's really easy for that to get away from you. There's no automatic discovery here. There's no automatic inventory. Now, if you're using something like System Center Configuration Manager, I could see you using its inventory database to determine which servers were running a particular service and, and of course assuming that they were all using the same service account then you could do this by pulling those names it starts to get really complicated you're definitely building your own tool set there and I think this ultimately is why we don't change our service passwords all that often it's a hassle it's largely a manual effort you largely have to keep track of who's running what manually. Um, you know, how many of you just keep a little notebook with all the service passwords written down? And, okay, maybe you lock that up in a safe or something, which is great, but it's just a very manual process. That's why we don't do it. So, in this month's blog article, I'm going to talk about some of the different capabilities that you might want to look for in a tool, whether it's a free or commercial tool, that can help automate some of these things and make it a little bit, well, heck, maybe even make it a regularly scheduled task. You provide a new list of passwords every 90 days or whatever, and it just takes over and does the work for you. Isn't that what the computers are supposed to do, the, the manual work?